Okay. Um, that's actually quite appropriate since we're going to be talking about contracts today. Um, so, so yeah, I'll let you guys um, um, make your call on that. Um, certainly, there's nothing to lose with short stories. The contract looked pretty decent um, that way. Uh, the big unknown factor in something like this is how much marketing they actually end up putting into it. What kind of ac editing are you actually going to get? And with it just starting, there's no way for you to know. Um, fortunately, I did look at the contest, and entering the contest does not obligate you to sign the contract. Um, so you could enter the contest if you win. You could look at the contract and decide if it's something you want to go, um, go through with or not. Um, they seem like they're, they're very um, upfront, straightforward people. Um, there, is some there are a lot of people, though, in publishing who, are, um, who give people bad deals not because they are um, bad people, but because they have no experience of what a good deal is. And so they just make a deal. They've worked in another industry, perhaps, um, and they just assume that, that that sort of contract is standard everywhere or whatever. There are a lot of well-meaning people who, um, who, don't, um, who don't do a good job. Um, and that can be just as bad as someone who's trying to scam you. Uh, today, though, we will talk about uh, one of the main things is we're going to talk about. You're actually in the class. You don't have a seat? It's fine. I like these. You like this one? OK, you're cool. Um, uh, so we're going to talk about how to get an agent. We've basically covered all of this, but we'll talk. We'll do any questions you have on publishing or agents. Uh, we'll talk about how to avoid getting scammed and all those sorts of things. Um, do we need another chair? Okay, go grab a chair. It's fine. Anytime you want to grab a chair, or if you want to sit on the floor. Uh, there is one s one more seat in here if you want to come in and sneak around the uh, around right there if that's a what's that oh yeah there's this one too you want this chair I'm not going to be sitting so just pull that over there and have a seat um, so one thing to remember is uh, boy what is this thing called someone's going to tell me is it Poe's law. Um, money flows toward the author. This is base, the basic rule of thumb to keep in mind as a way to avoid being scammed. All right? Money flows toward the author. This means that almost be wary of anything that has an upfront fee. This includes co publish, where you pay half the publish, publishing price, um, this includes reading fees. This includes, um, we'll publish it if. Um, this one means that there are sometimes people um, who will say, boy, we, um, we liked your book. It really needs a professional editor. We'll publish it if you hire a professional editor to go over it. Here's a professional editor that we like which is oftentimes either their husband under a pseudonym or their wife under a pseudonym or themselves under a pseudonym or something like this. Um, there, are, there are a number of scams out there that are just basically fake agents who exist to cycle all of the um, authors who try to pick them up as an agent through their um, pay for work for hire editing. Yes? Do these people sometimes hide out at conferences? Yes, they do. They go to cons. Mostly, they're not um, willing to pay that much money to go to the con. Usually, you're going to find them online. And they will look very, very prestigious. They'll make themselves look very prestigious. So um, if you want to avoid this, number one, remember this. Number two, you can go to Writer Beware. That's an I. Writer Beware is a um, blog. Look for Roger Beware at Blogspot, a blog run by the Science Fiction Association of America with um, help from the Mystery Writers Association of America. It posts uh, scam watches on um, publishers and contests um, and agents. And if you read through the archives for a few years with, with their scam listings, you'll get a very easy um, clue as to what type of things are truly scams and what type of things aren't. And you'll see they'll post a lot about misguided um, 
misguided uh, people who want to get into publishing but don't know what they're doing. Um, the other place that is pretty good is there's a place called Predators and Editors. who have a, um, a big list of agents and, um, and editors, and it's kind of hard to slog through. It's just a big list, but you can research uh, a given agent, editor, or um, publisher there, and they'll have if they've been recommended or not recommended. Predator spelled like that? Or uh, no, it's probably spelled the real way. <laughs> is it spelled this way? OK, OK, so it is spelled this way. Yeah, actually, yeah, you're right. Um, so anyway, I, I can never remember which one it is, and so I just Google it. Um, I, don't, I Google everything. Google it gets it. And then the other thing is the absolute right. I think it's spelled like that. Absolute right forums. Um, and absolute right forums have um, a place where you can post, hey, has anyone heard of this um, publisher? Tell me what's um, what." is going on with them. And a bunch of people will post to a, um, you know, it's like a, a place where a bunch of writers hang out. And they, um, a lot of them are very savvy when it comes to whether something's a scam or not. And almost ev every time I've Googled a publisher, they have already had a thread on them where people talk about it. Um, and the legit ones, often the editors show up on those threads and explain themselves and talk about their, um, their publishing. Um, Game. So um, those are three resources for you to use. Everyone got those down? All right. So you are watching out for anyone who's costing you, charging you up front kind of in an un, in a, um, how shall I say, it's particularly if they're doing it in a hidden way. There are times when you will, if you are self-publishing, change this. Meaning, um, this goes basically for all traditional publishing. But now that self-publishing has taken off, obviously, if you're going to do your own cover art, you're going to pay for it. Um, and if you're going to pay your own copy editor, you're going to pay for it. In those cases, the money doesn't flow toward the author. But uh, you want to be wary of accidentally paying people. Uh, reading fees, agents who charge reading fees, um, um, basically, the, the agents, the big major agents, have gotten together and said, this is something we're not going to do. It's one of the things that's, that is a big clue in separating the, uh, the serious agents from the fake agents. The fake agents survive by charging reading fees or by sending people to um, editing houses and, and whatnot. So the big agents don't. The good agents don't. If an agent charges a reading fee, reading fee you've got a 99 out of 100 chance that that is not a legitimate agent. Yes? What is that decision? Pay me $50 with your manuscript. I will read it and see if I'm willing to take you on as, as a client. They often couch it as, there are so many people who want agents that it's taking me away from my other work. And so therefore, I have to charge a nominal reading fee to make sure the people who are sending to me are serious. That's how they'll write it, um, which sounds very legit when it's couched the right way. Uh, the thing is, agents are talent scouts. This is one of their jobs. They, um, they, the, reading the slush has slowly moved to the agents, and they sift through it and hunt out the authors they think are going to be big. And in exchange, they get a percentage of that author's earnings. And so paying them de-incentivizes them to actually find talented writers and incentivizes them to publish them to, to promote themselves as just something, you know, send me this so I can make the money off of me doing the readings. And it's basically, it's, it's not considered a legit business practice among agents. That, you know, who knows if that will always be the case, but so far it is hold tr held true. Question. So, mm -hmm. Yes. Who will actually make the book for someone like that? Um, he will probably do electronic publishing only. Um, if someone was making the books, it would probably be the same people that you would hire to make the books. Printers, I mean, everybody uses basically the same printers, um, or this, at least the same types of printers. And so 
Um, I recently sold a, one of my novellas to Subterranean Press, small press. They do a print run of, you know, like 10,000 copies. Um, they will ha hire a printer and order them, just like I would if I were self-publishing it. The reason to go with subpress instead of just doing it myself is I don't have time to do all this myself. Um, and it's a really big hassle. Plus, Subterranean Press has a, a very good reputation. Uh, they do good work, and they'll handle all the cover design and all these things for the same reason that I go with Tor. Uh, for, for publishing my books. Uh, subpress, the difference is being a small press, is not going to get into all of the, it's not going to get in the major bookstores usually. Um, they may get small orders from some of the major chains. Uh, subpress does occasionally get into them, but some of the specialty presses really don't. But it's kind of seen as a prestige thing and a, they'll sell them at science fiction conventions, they'll be carried in the science fiction bookstores, and uh, they'll do all the work and pay me in advance.